Uh, I'm, I got a lot of material to cover in this video, so uh, I'm going to be doing a bit of reading, and I apologize for that. But I'm also going to start us off a little differently than I normally do, because I'm going to read you a quote. Uh, and this is uh, Blaise Pascal. You might recognize the name. French philosopher, theologian, mathematician. Most importantly, he was a Christian. And he had this to say. God being thus hidden, any religion that does not say that God is hidden is not true. And any religion which does not explain why does not instruct. Good quote, right? And it begs the question, if a God really did exist, why are we doing this? Why are we here debating this? Why is the state of our existence such that we have to speculate about this kind of thing? I mean, of all things for us not to know about our own universe, why is this one of them? I think we, I think we take for granted how really peculiar it is that we think if a conscious, thinking, feeling creator personally invested in us exists, that we wouldn't just know that beyond the shadow of a doubt. I mean, it's, it's really easily explained and accounted for if you don't believe in a god. Primitive cultures had to come up with anthropomorphic, relatable ways of explaining the natural phenomena of the universe. Those traditions were passed down through the generations, and they're still habitual to us today. Most of us are raised from birth with God as a household name, and the culture we live in reaffirms that notion on a day-to-day -day basis. So we see the world through God goggles. And even though we don't actually see God or actually hear God or interact with God in any way, um, we interpret our observations to fit the assumption that a God exists because that's what we've learned to do. That's all we can do. And it makes perfect sense. We are accustomed to expecting a deity, if it exists, not to make its presence clear and universally known. But why? Why should, why should we expect that? Again, if no God exists, it makes perfect sense. But if one does especially the Christian God, uh, this needs desperately to be accounted for, and it hasn't been. So why is God playing peekaboo with the world? Here's a little factoid for you. If the belief system we know as Christianity is an accurate reflection of reality, then it would be true that billions upon billions of souls are roasting in hell for the rest of eternity because they had not correctly guessed the right set of propositions to believe in by the time their lives on earth had ended. Um... <clears throat> It's not because they had any desire to rebel, it's not because they had a lust for power, not because they were angry with God, none of that. It's because they didn't know that the claims of Christianity were any different from the claims of any other crazy religion, and how should they? Christians themselves proudly admit it's a matter of faith. Well, the thing about that is, you can have faith that anything is true. Um, so once again, Christianity has no way of distinguishing itself as any more credible a belief than any other. <clears throat> so, why am I... Wasting your time by stating the obvious. Well, it's because the existence of non-belief, and by that I mean just the, the fact that there are people who, for whatever reason, are not convinced that these claims are true. It's, it's contradictory to the notion that the Christian God even exists in the first place. Now, let me give you a comprehensive definition of what I mean when I say the Christian God. <clears throat> I mean a conscious, personal being which, A, uh, created the universe and everything in it, B is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnibenevolent. C wants each and every soul to be saved and to know the truth. I get that from 1 Timothy 2.4, in case you're curious. Uh, D has provided a means for each soul to be saved by sending his son to die for our sins. But, and this is E, has not made it clear or apparent to the world that any of the above is even true. Now here's what's ironic about that last thing. Uh, yeah, God sent his son to pay the penalty for our sins so that we don't have to, but God wants the credit. He's not in the business of saving souls anonymously. God's not an altruist. Uh, you have to acknowledge that God did this for you, or guess what? Your ass ain't getting saved. Now, here's a problem. How can you acknowledge that God did this for you and thus get yourself saved if you're completely unaware that any of this is even going on? I mean, yeah, you might be aware that there's a religion that's claiming that all of this is going on, but that doesn't mean a damn thing. There's a whole lot of religions, and they make a whole lot of claims. To be saved, according to Christianity, you must at least think that the following claims are true. Um, and there may be more to being saved than this, but, but you must at least think that uh, a God exists, that you have committed sins against him, and that God saved you uh, or is willing to save you from the punishments of those sins. So let's, so let's take that group of statements. Let's call that X, proposition X. Um, 
Now, X may not, as I said, may not be sufficient in order for us to be saved, but it is necessary. No matter how good of a person you are, if you don't at least think X is true, you're going to be extra crispy for a very long time. Yes, I did make that up all on my own. I came up with it last night, got to bed around 4 or 4.30. <clears throat> um, so God wants us to be saved. God wants us to know the truth. That means God wants us to know X. So how come we don't know X? The best and most coherent explanation for why we don't know X is that X is not true and that there is not an omnipotent being who wants us to think it is. So if I were, if I were to take this and put it into a logical syllogism, um, it would look something like this. Premise one, if God exists, he desires for us to know X. Premise two, if God exists, he has the power to make us know X. Premise three, if God exists, given one and two, we should know X. Premise four, we do not know X. Conclusion, given three and four, God does not exist. Now, if you're a Christian and you're watching this, you're probably chewing on your hand right now, dying of frustration, because I'm forgetting about one really obvious thing, right? Free will. That's what, you, that's what you're going to say, right? Did I call it? I mean, you're thinking God can't just force us all to know that he exists and to know that he died for our sins. I mean, then we, we'd be walking around like a bunch of automaton robot droids. I mean, that's not what God wants. He, he wants us to have the free will not to worship him. And, you know, I've heard that uh, a billion and a half times, uh, and it's a convenient little soundbite, but it really is devoid of any real reflection whatsoever. And on top of that, it's a complete non sequitur. The apprehension of knowledge never has, never does, and never will negate freedom of choice. Knowledge does not negate choice. And if you are the free will type to make that claim, how exactly do you think it does? How do you think that would work? Or have you even thought about it? I mean, I can prove it to you right now. There are plenty of people, people I've met, people I know, unfortunately, that claim to know that God exists and that Jesus died on the cross and yada, yada, yada. But they're mad at God and they're angry about their life and so they choose to rebel and, you know, God can't tell them what to do and F God. And what does that tell you? I mean, were there not plenty of people in the Bible with whom God interacted personally and they still chose to rebel against them? Um, what about fallen angels? Here's a big one. Uh, fallen angels, whom you believe as a Christian, uh, witnessed God in all of his glory and all of his excellence, and still, they didn't seem to have a problem choosing the other team. Sorry, free will does not factor into this argument. Free will has nothing to do with any of this, and it isn't a justification for God not revealing himself. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to, I'm going to bottom line it for you right now and try to wrap this up. If the world were such that the claims of Christianity weren't highly debatable and didn't need to be believed, but instead were just known, obviously, to everyone. Billions and billions of souls would be spared eternal torment. Any Christian who believes that their God is all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving, and morally perfect must be prepared to account for the fact that the existence of this God is blatantly unclear. And it is for this reason, not, not morality, not rebellion, that a vast majority of the world's population would spend an eternity in hell. This is not a good divine plan. This is a bad divine plan, especially if the plan's architect really does love and care about the welfare of the world. This situation can only be the product of a God who is either evil or fictitious. Uh, intrepid man. Uh, you, you've uh, submitted, I think, two or three consecutive uh, video responses to my last few. Uh, and I just want to give you, like, uh, from my point of view, a, a Reader's Digest version of what's, what's happened in this exchange so far. Here's me, okay? Uh, do you maintain that God has done everything in his power to prevent us from getting ourselves sent to hell? Here's you. Uh, yes, God has done everything, but he won't do anything that would compromise our free will. Here's me. Well, God hasn't done X, Y, and Z, and they don't compromise free will. Here's you. Yeah, but God knows even if he does X, Y, and Z, people would still rebel, so he doesn't bother. Now, here's what confuses me about that statement. Are you trying to argue that God doesn't bother because every person would still rebel, or because some people would still rebel? And by rebel, do you mean consciously refuse to accept Jesus as their savior? Because the only examples that you gave to illustrate your point were from the Old Testament. 
and in that context, rebel simply meant disobeying God, but this is a different context. Christians disobey God all the time. That's not the issue. They just accept God's forgiveness for that disobedience, and that's what we're talking about here. I mean, are you... I hope not, but are you actually trying to argue that if every single person who currently happens not to be Christian suddenly found out that they were wrong, each and every one of them would proactively deny Jesus as their Savior anyway and knowingly choose to spend eternity in a lake of fire? I mean, I, I just... That would be about the most absurd thing that I've heard in a, in a very long time. Uh, I would say prove it. You wouldn't be able to. Debate's over. Uh, instead... What I hope you're arguing, uh, which is, in my opinion, only slightly less absurd, is that if God made these key facts known to every single person, there would still be some who would choose to rebel, and it is for that reason that God simply won't bother. Which, you know, begs the question, why on earth not? Let me, let me uh, try to illustrate my point, if I can. Let's imagine... Uh, the first story of a children's orphanage catches on fire. Okay, now the children are upstairs, they're sleeping soundly in their beds, and they're not trying to escape because they haven't yet realized that their lives are in danger. Now let's say you're a fireman, and you pull up to this orphanage in your big red truck, and you honk the horn, and you got the sirens going to make sure that all the children wake up, and once they do and realize what's happening, they run to the windows with their arms stretched out, screaming, save me, save me, but there's this one little kid who screams, don't come near me, mister, I don't like firemen. That's my best impression of a snotty kid. And you think to yourself, you know what? Why am I wasting my time? I mean, I drove all the way down here, I honked my horn, I turned on the siren, I made it perfectly clear to them that they were in danger of burning alive, and still, <laughs> and still, one of those little bastards doesn't want to be saved. Ugh, totally not worth it. I'm going home. You think you'd, uh, receive the key to the city after that, intrepid man? Here's my point. There are good, ethical, loving people in the world that have no problem with God. Uh, no desire to rebel, no need to piss off an almighty father figure. They just don't know that the claims of your particular religion are actually true. And I would be a good example of this. And what you seem to be arguing uh, is that God refuses to provide those people with the knowledge necessary to save themselves all because there are other people in the world which might rebel anyway? Are you kidding? You don't, you don't find a problem with that? I mean, it, I'm going to close with this. At one point in your video, you used an analogy, uh, which I found ironic. Um, and I found it ironic because it supports my point far better than it supports yours. Here's what you said. You said, it would make no difference if I offered you $100 for your brand new BMW or $110. The $10 doesn't make a difference. You're not going to sell me the car either way. Uh, you're right. You're right. I, I wouldn't sell you the car either way. Uh, $110 wouldn't convince me because it's a freaking BMW, and BMWs are worth way more than that. Now, anything over you know, $50,000, that would certainly do the trick. But if this guy purchasing my car in this scenario is supposed to be analogous to the almighty, all-powerful creator of the universe, I think it'd be appropriate that he'd have an infinite amount of cash in his back pocket. And do you, uh, do you know what percent of infinity 110 is? Roughly zero. <laughs> I mean, single-handedly, your analogy just demonstrated that God uses zero percent of his assets and his resources to get us saved. I mean, it's, it's almost as if God doesn't even exist.